So I told you guys last episode I wouldn't talk about Doc anymore until he proved he was his real identity, he proved more about his past story. So I, I kind of lied to you guys, but I kind of didn't. For all of you guys who don't want to hear about Doc's story, please skip the first two minutes of today's episode, as we will be talking about, of course, this past weekend. Uh, we had the Face It Admin set up a whole LAN environment for these pro players, a few pro players which were invited, and Doc was being one of them. Now, I say pro players very lightly. Of course, Doc has a really bright future uh, in, ahead of him, but not necessarily a pro player right now. He's obviously an FPL on the rise right now. Definitely a growing uh, kind of a come up player out there who looks very good for where he's at currently only being 17 years old so it was actually a face it event in the Netherlands and they actually wanted to stimulate a LAN environment so that the people that are invited there they'd have LAN PCs they'd have microphones they'd have of course webcams in front of them to show they were really who they were and it was actually Doc who did go to the event itself now I, I mentioned last episode I didn't think he was gonna go because he stopped reaching out to me uh, I think this guy at this point in time it's pretty clear he loves drama so if he were to reach out to me and tell me the truth I would have I would have actually ruined that kind of drama, the suspense there. He did go to the event, which is actually very surprising. And Face It Mikey over there, the Face It platform, continued to actually make strides to further the, the growth of these younger upcoming players. So what do you guys think about this? And also, the current background footage is actually Doc. Uh, it's actually Innocence footage from his Twitch live stream. He was actually doing FPL matches with people like Doc. He was actually playing against them, I believe, in this game. And yes, Doc's very first game at the LAN environment on that PC, mic'd up and everything. And you've got to imagine how nervous this guy is. We'll talk about that in a bit. He actually Actually dropped a 30 bomb in that very first game as a part of I believe it was either against Team Zaiwu um, and so it's really cool to see as well him dropping a 30 bomb in that game and you have to imagine as a 17 year old kid I was thinking about this all throughout the weekend all the all the stuff we said about this guy in the past no matter what his past is no matter what we find out to be true or not the fact is this he's a rising pro player out there and could have again like I said earlier a very bright future but given this environment I cannot imagine being a 17 year old kid thrown out into the limelight like we have especially over the past month or so with people like Richard Lewis and Thorne and other people out there in the face it scene all talking about this myself included you got to imagine as a 17 year old where you're at you're a junior or a sophomore in high school at least here in America this is a very nerve-wracking situation to be thrust into and so no matter what we find out in the future I do got to give him some sort of respect but again this will probably be hopefully the last time I talk about him until we find out the truth now here is where we go out from from here on out he had great results so far actually simulated in the land environment he showed himself to apparently apparently be I seriously believe I hope you guys do as well. He is who he says he is. I know there was the, the controversy a few weeks ago about his microphone not being synced up to his audio. And although you guys can still tell, if you guys watch, I'll link uh, Innocent's actual Twitch live streams, the rebroadcast down below, he's still very shy. He's still very quiet. And like I said previously, he's only 17 years old. He's been thrust into the limelight of all these pro players who are generally right, you know, early 20s. They've been out there for a few years and doing this a lot more actively than he's been doing. I mean, he's been behind closed doors using someone else's voice as his own for so long you got to imagine it's going to take some time to actually adapt to this and here's where we're at right now it's going to take until obviously he does turn 18 apparently this month in September and he also told us as well he will be moving out of his house now we're not really sure if this is a lie or not uh, of course he had that tweet a while ago about his dad actually locking him out of his computer and then he deleted that tweet so we weren't really sure if it was if that was true or not so again a lot of things out there we still have yet to be proven but Doc did prove himself this past weekend at the FPL event to be a considerable talent especially for his age and now where the future holds we don't know. And also another big news out there, we do have some big changes coming more in September for Zai Wu. Like I mentioned before, he was actually playing in the FPL event. He was playing random FPL matches. I'm not sure he was actually there in the Netherlands, but he was playing those matches this past weekend against people like Doc and Innocent uh, alongside a lot of the Imperial members. And it does seem as well, we do have apparently a new Tempo Storm ESCA roster on screen for all of you. Zai Wu was a part of that. Now, it would not surprise me at all. I told you guys a couple episodes. He did us the courtesy to actually reach out on Twitter. He told us, of course, his contract, apparently according to Nell, does expire in January. It's a $100,000 buyout, but he did expect to actually be signed or actually consider some offers from teams out there throughout the month of September. So I would not be surprised at all if Tempo Storm was one of those teams, but I cannot confirm to all of you guys if that is the right team. Of course, they've also been trialing people like there, like MBK as well as um, other members out there as well. And who knows, like RPK as well. On top of that, Tempo Storm, they actually tried to qualify for Star Series qualifier with those couple of guys. And it would not surprise me at all if they also tried to target another Frenchman and that in Zai Wu. So it would make a lot of sense if Tempo Storm was the team, but 
cannot confirm to you guys right now if it will be the official team. If it is, though, expect them to sign sometime in this month of September. Once again, here I am in the kitchen. You guys know what time of the video it is. Thanks to CS Money, our sponsor. Great way to trade and buy skins now. I'll link it down below. But also, a big thing, because they are sponsoring me, I'm going to be doing a lot of giveaways. I've actually announced two knife winners today on Twitter, so please look at your Twitter DMs, guys, if you are the winners. But also, if you guys do use a CS Money link down below, please comment down below skins you want me to actually acquire to do giveaways with because CS Money is, of course, paying me to do the shout out. I might as well get some skins you guys want for giveaways. So do me a favor, guys. If you want to use CS Money, their link is down below, but also comment down below your favorite CSGO skins you want for giveaways. Okay. Now back to Jake. And if you guys can tell, I'm actually really tired. Of course, my last Sunday's episode, I was very tired as well. I don't know what it is. It's supposed to be a relaxing day. So unfortunately enough, I will not be actually making this episode at the very end of E-League Premiere. I'll give you guys, of course, all the updates up to that, uh, to, up to this point of that being the grand finals so far. And that will be, spoiler alert guys, Liquid versus Astralis. But again, more importantly, this entire event, and I'll cover, of course, the results probably in tomorrow or Tuesday's episode, has been the whirlwind of emotions throughout the entire tournament. It actually brought some great matchups so far, some big upsets so far as well as we actually had Fnatic in the group stages they 2-0 swept phase clan phase clan did not make out of group stages for the first time in a while and of course olaf meister being back that was a huge surprise and then it was later on fanatic actually following to mouse sports so navi and mouse sports going out of group b and alongside that liquid and astralis out of group a i would say group a as well probably a little bit a little bit less of a surprise to see cloud nine and mibr go out too early and it was also kind of shocking to see all three north american teams that being cloud nine mibr and as well as liquid i say american teams not north american teams all in group a so you can consider it to maybe be an easier bracket for a team like Astralis, but Astralis also looking very dominant. So we'll discuss playoffs in a bit here, but more so about the whirlwind of emotions out there is first of all, very unfortunate news out there is actually Taco's dad passed away a couple days ago during the event. Ever since then, Liquid looking actually very strong. Taco himself statistically not performing you know, too, too much, but his teammates have come out and said they're going to play for the guy. I can't imagine losing your dad at an event like uh, playing after that kind of thing has to be uh, an amazing feat in itself. So prayers go out to him and his family as well. I think it was announced a while ago that his dad was sick so um, they continue to play they will be in the grand finals today as well uh, Nafly coming out on HLTV and saying the team is going to play for him so it'd be a really cool event to see Liquid come away with although Astralis is definitely the heavy favorites I would not be surprised to see a 2-0 sweep or at least a domination of Astralis winning that series but again it'd be a really cool storyline and again prayers go out to Taco's family after losing his father also on top of that though we did have Liquid beating teams like Navi the same day his dad passed away so uh, it's a really cool story but also very emotional and people didn't really catch this clip too much. We actually had a show match. I was able to watch this at work. Don't tell my no, my boss watches this video. But I was watching the show match at work like we do for esports news stuff. We watch matches every now and again, and it was actually Cloud9 versus MIBR. If you guys did miss this clip, and this clip is actually from after the game, of course, after MIBR did beat Cloud9. It was a closer series than you probably would plan for, but it was really cool to see as well the emotion from Stewie2K in this clip. Now, I might be crazy. I want you guys to look very closely at this and tell me if I'm crazy. It looked as if not only was Stewie2K very nervous to confront his former teammates, but the way everything happened afterwards, I'll show you guys a clip, and then we can add an answer analyze it further out. But did you see it? The way Stewie was just like holding his chest and afterwards Fallen being the amazing guy, you, you, you kind of figure he's like the father figure of the team. The way he's patting him on the back and saying, it's almost like he's saying, it's okay, man. It wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be. Like, it's, it, what, it's okay. You survived. It wasn't nerve wracking, man. You're good. That's what it, it was just kind of cool to see. And I'm really cla actually glad the Reddit forums were the ones who caught that clip because I never would have, you never really see that kind of thing. So the person out there who actually found that clip, you are amazing. The way you actually probed that uh, reaction, it was very hard to spot out. But what do you guys think about that? Stewie 2K, obviously a newer transfer, but it's been a few months now. Obviously, Tarek is the newest transfer from that team. And also, very lastly on the whole whirlwind thing, we also saw Cold Zera's first event ever, first ever LAN event in nearly four years with a negative rating. Although it was obviously very close to not being a negative rating, it was kind of just shocking to see how far you have to actually zoom out on the HLTV page to find this guy's negative events. You can't find one. They're actually not present on LAN events on HLTV. And this is the very, very first ever negative event he has seen. So maybe a good reason as to why they went out in group stages. Although they did look kind of strong against North American teams out there. It just, it's continued to make me very worried about the major. And speaking of North American CSGO, we actually have some big changes to teams out there who failed to make the major qualifiers. But teams that definitely can dominate the future of North American ESCA, maybe Mountain Dew League, and eventually maybe work their way into Pro League. And that actually could be Swole Patrol. Swole Patrol has now reunited. If you actually Google search free 
Freakazoid and Swag. This is the first picture that came up for me, guys. They are reunited, as apparently Swole Patrol announced earlier this weekend, guys. Uh, they will have the addition of Swag and Marky after they lost Silent and Little Man last week, and that will be your new Swole Patrol roster. Now, I actually have a lot of potential for these guys in the future. Obviously, this season of ESCA is not going to go for an ESL Pro League spot, but next season with Swole Patrol, expect them to try their butts off, and I cannot wait to see if these guys actually can do some stuff. And this does mean officially that Torque, the ex Torqued roster, of course, we actually had the former, the three man, the two three man crew actually joined Ghost Gaming. Ghost Gaming may be making changes as well. They actually lost Poyo not too long ago. So changes going all around the lower North American scene, but also now, of course, uh, Swag and AZK have separated ways. Swag now going to Swole Patrol. Torque is now officially dead, and uh, the team that could have been is no longer. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, guys, we actually have Super Stidham taking to Twitter. I'll link his twit longer down below. He tells the full story of, of course, his blackmailing. If you guys were not here a couple days ago for our last episode, Super Stidham, a very well-known CSK YouTuber out there, was actually blackmailed. Uh, several of his videos were actually getting, I guess you could say, copyright struck by a random person out there. He took the Twitter, though, to actually uh, kind of explain the situation. It's no surprise at all, though, YouTube's amazing response team. I've had this difficulty in the past as well when I had a live stream go a little bit wrong. It was not, it was not my fault, though. I actually had a 90 day ban on my live stream. I could not get a hold of YouTube. I had to reach out for days and days and days for them to actually look into uh, the, the case itself and they finally sided with me. It's amazing to see, especially with Super Stidham, a YouTuber out there who is huge in the CSGO scene, had this kind of response. Someone was actually copyright striking his videos and YouTube, and because this guy was actually copyright striking his videos, this same guy was actually reposting Super Stidham's videos on another website as evidence that it was actually Super Stidham copying his videos, even though Super Stidham's videos videos were posted way before they were reposted on the other sites. If that makes any sense at all, pretty much if YouTube's team would have looked into this at all, it would, it would easily be identified as Super Stidham's original content, and this copyright problem should not have been a problem in the first place. And he also closes out the, uh, the twit longer as well by explaining that apparently what this kid was doing, false copyright striking and claiming videos, is illegal. And YouTube actually offered him the chance, if he wanted to, to have this guy's personal information, and he could continue to press him further uh, if he wanted to press charges or press him to court as well. Super Super Stidham did not actually, he didn't actually go into detail if he was going to do so, but it's kind of crazy to see. So for all of you guys who are trying to troll out there and copyright strike videos, just don't do it. It's illegal and it could actually end it in jail time like Super Stidham actually says. So luckily enough, his channel will stay intact for now. Um, we'll see what happens in the future. And I guess I have to mention it. I'm not going to take sides on this. I would love to know what you guys think about this as well. We've had this, of course, many times in the past. You guys know very well who Thorne is, an analyst in the CSGO scene who I still think makes amazing content, but sometimes can push pros through absolutely limits and especially over the past month or so we had him say some things about Zeus which uh, inherently were actually true a lot of things he does say is backed up by a lot of knowledge out there and things that are statistically and pretty obviously true Zeus responded on Twitter with a, a, a long tweet about that and a lot of pros in the, in the scene as well as members in the scene took Zeus's side over Thorns because I think it's a lot easier to fight people like Thorn out there than it is to fight an actual pro player like Zeus because there's there's two sides to the story whenever these pros come out they always say that you have to actually be a pro at the game to analyze pro players which I don't think is necessarily true, but the community out there, a lot of people out there tend to take the pro player's side against the analyst. Just like if there was a pro player out there fighting with me, obviously you guys would probably take his side, but I think Thorne has a little more backing than, than I obviously do. But also, we had Snacks finish off our weekend, guys, with this tweet. If you guys can try and dis de decrypt what he actually meant, of course his English is not the best. You guys can get the gist of it, though, uh, actually at attacking Thorne as well. So what do you guys think about this situation? Who do you usually side with? I just think it's an interesting debate, especially we've had this this over the past month or so, this real heightened debate about, you know, who is actually right, the analysts or the pro players, who actually has the right to say what, what do you need credential-wise, background-wise, to actually make a point anymore in an argument, because it seems whether you make an argument that's fair or not, everyone's going to attack your background credentials. You know, you never were a pro player, you never were this. It, it's just kind of crazy to see uh, how this has actually oh, kind of expanded over the past four to five weeks. So, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. I will see you guys all back here, hopefully tomorrow or Tuesday, with some more news. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see y'all then. Goodbye, guys.